Elon Musk debriefs us on Starship's test flight, Falcon Heavy penetrates the sky, and Starlink nixes its data cap. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Significant repairs to Stage 0 at Starbase Texas continue through another week, as SpaceX presses towards Starship and Super Heavy's second flight in the coming weeks. Crews going especially hard on the orbital launch mount, including, but not limited to, untwisting the rebar in the foundation. If we'd expected to uh, dig a hole, we would not have flown. But more about this in a minute. And that's not all the company is up to. Up Highway 4 at the construction site, foundations for new facilities have been set and buildings are beginning to sprout from them, as seen here in Starship Gazer's photo of the new second mega bay, which of course will be used to further expand Starfleet. On Saturday evening, Elon did end up doing his promised spaces debrief for the first flight, making his contentment with the mission clearly understood. Basically, the, the, the outcome was roughly in the sort of what I expected. Um, maybe slightly exceeding my expectations, but uh, roughly what I expected, uh, which was, uh, or ho hoped for, I should say, which is that we would get clear of the pad um, with minimal damage to the pad. Um, and I'm glad to report that the, the pad damage is actually quite small and looks like it can be required, repaired uh, quickly. So let's go over what exactly happened during the test flight. Um, I'll go through a bunch of notables. Um, at at liftoff, uh, there were three engines that we didn't, we, we chose not to start, essentially, or that hit hit uh, aborts. That and so we, we actually lifted off with 30 engines, um, which is the minimum number of engines, because the system didn't think they were healthy enough to bring them to full thrust, so they were shut down. The engines out led to the rocket's abrupt shift away from the pad during liftoff. It was it was related to the engines out. Um, and we, we do not normally expect to lean. Um, it should be go aspirationally going straight up. While the pad was shattered by the thrusting up of the 30 engines, the launch ring itself survived undamaged. When we went up to full thrust, uh, we may have compressed the sand underneath the concrete uh, to such a degree that the concrete uh, effectively bent and then cracked. That, that's a, that is a leading theory. There appears to be minimal damage to the launch ring. Um, and to the components inside the launch ring. So that's that's great because that launch ring is, you know, take, take six six months to build up a new launch ring. We have we have some spares, but uh, that that's there's a lot of complex plumbing and wiring inside the launch ring, and that, that actually appears to be in good shape. That shrapnel from the Raptor explosion we saw 30 seconds into flight was the heat shields of adjacent engines. Then at uh, T plus 27 seconds, uh, engine 19 lost communications concurrent with some kind of energetic event that uh, liberated the outer <laughs> outer heat shield uh, from the e engines 17, 18, 19, and 20 area. You can see this on video, actually. The, the rocket kept going, though. T plus 62 seconds, uh, we see additional aft heat shield damage uh, near engine 30. However, the uh, engine continues to run. SpaceX is no longer able to control the rocket at T plus 85 seconds. And then at T 85 seconds is where th <laughs> uh, things really hit the fan. Um, we see engine six with lost the communication uh, to tr thrust vector control. F roughly from this point onwards, we, we lose uh, thrust vector control of the rocket. So we lose steering at T plus 85 seconds. Starship 24 never attempted to separate from the booster because the vehicle recognized things weren't exactly nominal as it was tumbling back to Earth. The vehicle structural margins appear to be uh, better than we expected. <laughs> <laughs> as we can tell by the fact that the, the vehicle is actually doing somersaults towards the end and uh, still staying intact. Flight termination is, is uh, executed if it's executed on both. So the ship, the ship currently does not attempt to save itself. No current evidence shrapnel from the pad is responsible for the loss of control. We, we actually, do, we weirdly do not see uh, evidence of, of the rock tornado actually uh, damaging engines or heat shields in a material way. But it, it may have, but we have not yet seen uh, evidence of that. Booster 9 will have much newer and uniform engines to help with that. It, it was actually just good good to get this this vehicle off the ground because we've made so many improvements in this, uh, Booster 9 and beyond. We really just needed to fly this vehicle and then move on to the much improved uh, Booster 9. Uh, and, and, and later ship designs. The, the big things that are like important for the next flight are um, uh, ensuring that thrust vector control, we don't lose thru thrust vector control, so sort of isolation of thrust vector control. So I think it's, it, at, 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 when all is said and done, this will be an extremely reliable design. 
but you, you, it's absolutely fundamental to achieve engine isolation. But if we'd not lost, if, if we'd thrown off the remaining engines and maintained thrust effect control, we would have made it to staging. You know, so that, that's our goal for the next flight is make it to staging and ho hopefully succeed in staging uh, and uh, get, get to orbit. Did, so I think, I think we've got a decent shot of getting to orbit with the next flight. So that, that my expectation for the next flight would be more likely to reach orbit than not. The pad will have major upgrades as well for the next flight. We were we we're going to be putting down a a, a very strong uh, steel uh, sandwich. It's basically a water jacketed sandwich. That's two layers of, of thick, uh, very thick plate steel uh, that that are also sort of uh, perforated on the upper side, so that you you have what is basically a super strong steel shower head pointing up, and so it should be much much less dusty, and we should not have a rock tornado uh, with the next flight. So, what's the near future timeline look like now? Well, I'm hopeful we can get four flights out this year, maybe five. We are probably ready to launch in uh, six to eight weeks. The longest lead item on that is probably requalification of the flight termination system. It, it took way too long to rupture the tanks. And when the vehicle got to low enough altitude, it, the uh, atmospheric density was enough to uh, cause structural failure. Environmental and wildlife groups have, of course, filed a lawsuit against the FAA this week, basically alleging the agency failed to appreciate Mother Earth and that Starship's liquid methane harms her climate. They want SpaceX's five-year license revoked. Uh, this is SpaceX is frankly just another example of environmental racism. A big, <laughs> On Sunday, SpaceX finally got their second Falcon Heavy rocket for the year off the pad from Florida, carrying a bus-sized communication satellite for Viasat. During the ascent, Canada tried to shoot down the rocket, but of course missed. Better luck next time, buddy. One, two, three, four. Canada deserves more money. This was the first time a Falcon Heavy used used fairings. SpaceX shared video of the reentry into the atmosphere on Twitter. The glowage you see is plasma, the fourth state of matter. The side boosters were also used, but all three first stage boosters were expended since the mission requires extra giddy up to get the payload to orbit, where it was deployed four and a half hours later. Then on Thursday morning, another flock of 56 Starlink birds were delivered successfully to low Earth orbit from a couple pads over at Slick 40, riding on top of a Falcon booster for its seventh mission and touching down on shortfall gravitas bobbing on the Atlantic Ocean. Starlink customers, which now includes myself in an act of great timing, were emailed some good news the other day. SpaceX is no longer deprioritizing users who go over their one terabyte data cap. Huzzah! Dragon was scheduled to launch the next private crew of astronauts to the space station for Axiom's second Axe mission on May 8th, but that's no longer the plan and no explanation was given. However, this weekend, Crew 6 will board their Dragon capsule already docked to the station, undock it, take a short joyride, and park it at a different port in anticipation for the next Dragon launch set for June. Well, that's all for this one. Thanks for stopping by. And super duper thank you to those of you supporting the show. Have a nominal weekend. Until next time, Godspeed.